What's up, guys? Welcome back to Chats with Shay and Erica. Um, so today, Erica and I were just chatting about what are we going to talk about today? And I have been, you know, since signing day is coming up soon for college kids, I've been talking to a lot of my high school kids. And not just like recently, but over like the last year, there's been a lot of talk about comparison and not feeling good enough because you're seeing other people, you know, getting signed and getting recruited and getting all these offers and you just feel like you're behind. So that's what I wanted to get in today. And I kind of wanted to first share my story and Erica, I don't know what, what your recruiting story is like. And, and, but if you want to kind of share yours and then we can kind of get into some different tips and stuff. But for me, I was on a really high level club team where players were getting recruited by North Carolina, by BYU, by Santa Clara, like by these, you know, the, the cream of the, the what, did, what do you call that? The top of the cream, cream of the top, something cream like of, that. Cream of the crop. Cream of the crop, <laughs> cream of the top, whatever. The cream of the crop, they were getting recruited by those schools. And I was still like really struggling with my confidence from my injury, like a few years later. And I was sending out all the emails. I was doing everything you were supposed to be doing, but I just, I, I wasn't getting many hits. And there was a lot of pressure on me to go division one from my parents and from my coaches and from the club, because the coach that I played for every single player she coached got division one offers. So like, that was so much pressure on me to like, okay, I have to get division one, but I'm not really getting many hits. I'm only getting a few emails. And so I really struggled with comparison in the college recruiting journey and a lot of stress and a lot of pressure. And it just wasn't healthy for me mentally. Like I really struggled with feelings of I'm not good enough. When I stepped onto the field, I was just felt complete pressure. If I'd see a college coach, I was like, oh my gosh, what are they thinking? Are they watching me? What are they writing down? So like all of that brought just a lot of pressure and made it not very fun for me in my college recruiting journey. And thankfully I, I did get, you know, some good offers, you know, later on, but it, it took a while for me to kind of change my mindset around, you know, the whole college recruiting journey. So that's kind of my story. And I know there's probably a lot of girls out there that feel the same way where maybe your teammates are getting recruited and getting offers and getting emails. And maybe you feel like you're behind. Um, and we'll talk about, there's no such thing as being behind, but Erica, I want to kind of hear, your kind of recruiting journey? Sure. It's, yeah, mine's pretty similar. I think when we were all very young, we wanted to play for the top 25 division one schools, yes. like your UNC's, Stanford, UConn, Florida State, all those amazing programs. And I think it's awesome to have high goals. And we've discussed this before, Shay, just the whole like, quote unquote, be realistic conversation when it comes to college recruiting, yes, you want to, but yes, also shoot for high goals and hold yourself to a high standard and work for it and you'll create more opportunity for yourself. But I did feel some pressure to go division one. And this was a time when social media posts and Facebook commitment posts did not exist. So the pressure was still real then. So I can only imagine what it is like for everyone today. But my journey was just looking at more of the, the bigger picture and what suited me best, not just for soccer, but also these other factors that everyone needs to consider in a college because it mm -hmm. is another four years of your life. <laughs> so right. you have to go for more than just the soccer team. How is the campus life? What is the size of the school? is are there a lot of extracurriculars and social events do they have the area of study you want to go down do they have good academics can you see yourself living in that dorm and these are all really important and i ended up actually turning down a few D division one offers at university of maryland university of wisconsin roosevelt's alma mater and george yeah. washington university and people back then were like, you're crazy. <laughs> you are nuts for turning this down. But I, I was looking beyond just soccer and I wanted to go to a smaller school 
I wanted to go to a school that was close to home. I didn't want to be in Wisconsin in the cold. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And I, I went to a school, uh, Johns Hopkins University, where all of those pieces just clicked for me. Mm-hmm. And yes, it's a, a division three program, but they're also a badass division three program. Yeah. So they win their conference and I would be on a winning team. They make the national tournament every year. And that was a factor too. Like how good was the team? University of Maryland was division one, but it wasn't a winning team. They were doing terrible at the time. Mm, Um, So those are other factors as well to consider and really write it out, really get clear on it. And I've worked with several girls who did go to division one programs and they followed that path because they were just attracted to the shiny bells and whistles yeah. And the Facebook post and the uniform colors, even <laughs> only to transfer after year two to a smaller school. And I see that, I don't know if you see this happening with your girl, Shay, but I see more and more girls making that quick emotional decision and then transferring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's actually something that, um, that I did. I, so I went to Virginia Commonwealth University, my first semester. I was only there one semester, but I, I lived in Utah. My family was in Utah. So as an 18 year old kid going across the country was was a really tough decision. And so along those lines is like, realize that, cause I know so many, so many players are like, so fearful of, of going far or of making the wrong decision. And then they just don't do anything. So realize I'm going to, I'm going to play both, both sides to this. Realize that if you are unhappy at a school, you don't have to stay there, Mm -hmm. right? You don't have to stay at a school you're unhappy with. You can always transfer, right? So realize that that option is there, but also like, don't make a rash decision and don't make a decision just because it's shiny or just because it's division one, or just because the team is great. And then you're like, oh, I don't like this. Like you have to think about so many different factors And one of the things that we talked about actually on a call yesterday with my girls, I said, like, I I said, I, when you're looking at schools, pick a school where you could see yourself living there and being happy, even if you weren't playing your sport. Right. So like, cause you never know what if you get injured, what if your scholarship gets taken away, you never know. So it's like, pick a school where you love the school, the environment, the social life, the campus, the academics so much to where you would be completely happy there if you didn't play your sport. I think that's kind of a good, um, you know, way to think about like, do I actually like the school or am I just picking the school purely based on the athletics? Mm -hmm. And just like picking it based on wanting to keep up with everyone else or just showcase where you're going. But if, if there's ever a quote that, just ring so true every time it's comparison is the thief of joy Mm -hmm. and not only that but it takes you out of what you should be doing to better yourself so if you are looking around to what everyone else is doing as far as college commitments then how can you take action yourself can you send out some more emails to coaches can you get on twitter and put up more highlight reels of your playing. Like what can you do in those moments of comparison to come back to yourself so that you can open up those college opportunities? I love that. Yeah. So like comparison, usually it goes like, okay, you see the post, the Twitter, right? We see them all the time, right? Erica on Twitter or whatever we see, oh, I got, you know, or an offer to D1 Maryland or like whatever it is. And usually when you see that, it's like, oh my gosh, like there goes another spot. Like, why am I not getting these offers? Am I not good enough? Like those are kind of all the thoughts that run through your head. But instead of looking at it that way, like look at it as like the possibilities, like, oh, wow, that's awesome. She got recruited or she got an offer to play here. Like that's also possible for me. So going from like this, like scarcity to like this, oh my gosh, there's so much possibility. Right. And then also what you said is like, when you see that, and when you feel yourself start to compare, take action and write down something that you can actually do. Okay. I'm feeling that comparison feelings. Now I'm going to go and email a coach. I'm going to go edit my highlight video. I'm going to go follow some coaches on Twitter. Like instead of just being in that negative energy, 
see if you can actually move yourself forward instead of letting that kind of stop you. Yes, that that action always helps and just not taking it personally because it is not it's not personal. There's so many factors at play as to why other girls may be committing sooner than you. It it really depends on the college program and some college coaches are much earlier to that process or maybe they needed certain personnel. So yes. if you see like your friend who's a forward committed it's probably because that college really needed a forward maybe you're a defender and some colleges aren't looking for defenders right now and that's just how it is it's not a personal issue it's a personnel issue yes absolutely different thing so there's just many factors at play with all this and the best thing you can do is just focus on yourself focus what you can do in that moment and and do what you want. Don't do what your parents want. Yes, they should be involved in the decision. Obviously don't do what your neighbors want. Don't do what your friends' parents want, because here's the thing I have worked with, with players who have been in like the end of their kind of recruiting and they really liked this division two school, but they were like, Oh, I don't know, because I'm expected to go play division one. I want to, I want to tell people that I'm playing division one. And if I don't, then I don't, I don't feel like I really accomplished my goal. Mm -hmm. And then she went on to say like, when I, if I do get a division one offer, if I do play division one, then I'll feel good enough. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, no accomplishment, no division, no status will ever make you feel good enough. That's an inside job. Because as soon as you get that division one offer, there's going to be another thing. You're going to say, oh, I'm not playing, but when I play, I'm going to feel good enough. When I get score goals, when I win this award, I'm going to feel good enough. So don't ever let the status of division one or division two or a certain school affect your self-worth or like, don't let other people's opinions of you change and affect your decision and what you want to do. Cause it's you, the, you, it's four years of your life. It's not their life. If mom and dad want you to stay close, I get that. I get that. But you have to do what you want to do because at at this point, like it's like you're leaving mom and dad, right? Like they are going to be a smaller, still a huge part of your life, but a smaller part of your life. So don't let any, any outside judgment, whether it's friends, family, whatever affect how you live the the rest of, well, I mean, it is the rest of your life because those four years will totally change the trajectory of your life but don't let them change your life because then you're handing over your power to them. And when you hand over your power to them, you're saying no to yourself. That's so, so good. Shay. I, that was like one big mic drop. And (laughs) I, I love that. Just not defining your worth based on the type of school that you go to. And any college you play for or any division you commit to or any junior college, it is all commendable and amazing. And you should be proud of that. Playing college sports and also being in the academic world and being a student athlete at the same time, that's a hard job and it's amazing and it's so fun. And everyone should be able to experience something that is fun for them. And again, just keeping in mind all of these pieces in a college that you want, it's a long four years, but it also goes by really fast. So you want to yeah. make sure that you're getting the most out of it as a player and as a human, and you're really enjoying yourself. Yeah. Question for you. What was the main one or two things that made you say yes to John Hopkins? Like what were the main things that really pulled you to that? Mm. Definitely the team culture. Yes. There, I mean, there was just so many amazing and fun traditions in that program. And when I visited that, that changed the game for me. I just loved how the upperclassmen especially were just so nice. And this is like a thing at Johns Hopkins. The women's soccer team is known as the nice girls on campus. Oh, really? And yeah. And they still are. And that just speaks a lot to just 
the tradition of the program and all the fun team activities that are going on. So that was a big deciding factor for me. And I really did love being close to home because I wanted my parents to be able to make every game. Yeah. And that was absolutely amazing. So those were, those were my top two and then top three, like the academics, that's a given. Right. Doesn't get much better than that. Um, Yeah. Thank goodness I passed, but (laughs) those would would be my top three on, on why I picked it over those Mm. big, uh, like D1, uh, big 10 and ACC teams. Yeah. I love that. Cause that just gives, you know, more, um, concrete, like, okay, this is what's really important. And the same thing for me, it was number one was team culture, right? Yeah. Like I was terrified to go that far, but it was team culture. And like the coaches, it was like so much of a, a family environment that even though I was 2000 miles from home, like, I felt like I had a family there. I felt like I was going to be taken care of. And then when I visited, the school two hours from my house, which I actually ended up going there. But when I was first in my visiting, that's why I made the decision to go 2000 miles from home was because the team culture was there at VCU and at Utah state, it wasn't at the time. Now, when I transferred, it was amazing. Team culture was amazing. Um, But that's really what made me decide to go far was number one, the team culture, number two, the coaches and number three, I just wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something crazy. I wanted to get out of Utah and I just wanted to experience a whole other life. Um, So yeah, I'm so glad that I went there and I'm so glad that I transferred back and everything worked out exactly how it was supposed to. So always keep that in mind as in your college recruiting journey too, that if you don't get offered by a school, I just had a player that, you know, was crushed because she didn't get offered Um, by her dream school, but just realize that everything is working out the way it's supposed to work out. So if you don't get an offer somewhere, it was meant to happen. If you do get an offer somewhere, it was meant to happen. So just also trust that whatever school you're meant to be to, it will happen as long as you put in the work. That's super. And yeah, there's always a school out there for everyone and it, it will work out. And I think it's good that we touched on the team culture thing because that yeah. one is overlooked a lot. And I've just heard horror stories of girls going to college programs where there was drama. The coach did nothing to mitigate it. There was just backstabbing and just like really bad like dy- team dynamics. And that's, that's just not fun. And that's really hard to undo, especially if the coach is not working on that team culture. Yeah. So that's really hard to turn around unless the, the coaching staff changes too. So really yeah. keep that in mind, because in yeah. worst case scenario, if you get injured one year, like you still want to enjoy at least hanging out with the team and going to practices. And, and that's just worst case scenario, but something to really think about as well. Yeah. Cause if the team culture is toxic, then like it can literally affect every, every area of your college experience, especially if you're far from home, cause you don't have your, yeah. your family to run to and, and all that. So yeah, I, I would say team culture, we could, ar- I could arguably say that that's the number one, most important thing, but everyone's going to have their most important things, but yeah. Anything else you want to add to today? I think that was awesome. No, I think that covers it all. I think this is such a great topic and I'm sure many of you guys will get a lot from this chat, but yeah, Shay, thank you again. It's so nice to have these. I know we haven't done one in a while, but we'll get back on track. Yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and yeah, share it with a friend and congrats to all of you. I know signing day is coming up here soon. So congrats to all the girls that um, signed their letters of intent this month. And yeah, we'll see you next time.